Today, I'll be going over how I color grade my D-Log M footage coming out of my DJI Osmo Action 4. And everything that I do in today's video can be done in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So let's get started. All right, so here we are now in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. We've got our clips over here on the left side. We've got our timeline here. First thing we're gonna do is just drag and drop our clips into the timeline. Uh, once we've got them in the timeline, we're gonna come down here to the color tab. It's right next to the Fairlight music tab and next to the Fusion tab. It's one of the little circles there. All right, so here we are now in the color space tab. This is what the color tab is gonna look like. Um, there's a lot going on here. These are your clips here. Nodes are up here. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is actually come over here in the bottom right. Um, I've got the waveform on. Yours is probably gonna start off with something else. It might be Parade, uh, it might be vector scope. but you're gonna wanna switch that to waveform. It's gonna show you this here. This is gonna be the easiest way to see what's going on while we are color grading. So uh, personally, I really like to use that there. Now the next thing we're gonna do, I'm pretty simple when I do this color grading, I'm not doing anything crazy. So we're gonna come up here, we're gonna come to our node, we're gonna right click it. It's gonna bring this drop down tab here. We're gonna go to add node and we're gonna add serial. We're gonna do the same thing to create a, uh, another node, three in total. Now these are all in serial, that's how we want it to be. Basically this means that the color grade is gonna be applied the first node first and then the second node and then the third node. So it's almost like layers if you do photo editing but this is the order that the color grading is going to be applied in. Now that we've got those made, I'm actually going to start with the third node here. So I'm going to come to the third node. Uh, what I used to do is, um, I used to do a color space transform and a lot of my videos have that done to it, but I recently found a better way to do this and it actually involves a LUT that you have to download uh, from DJI, but it's directly from their website and it's made for the DJI Osmo Action 4 D-Log M. Um, so I figure that is the best way to go and now that I've tried it, it does look like it gives the best uh, color space transform or the best uh, It's the best LUT pretty much to use in this case So um, let me show you real quick how to download it. All right, so you're gonna come here to the uh, DJI Osmo Action 4 D-Log M to Rec 709 Vivid LUT link I'll make sure to put that link in the description below so you can just easily get to it uh, Once you're here, you're gonna download this if you have a Mac and this if you have Windows um, these .cube files are basically going to be the LUT itself and then once you've got those downloaded and then once you've got the LUT downloaded we're going to come over here back in the color space tab again we're going to come over here in the top left here and we're going to click LUTs so once we come to this uh, little LUTs tab here we're going to right click uh, the top where it says LUTs the little folder there and we're going to click reveal in finder uh, this is going to open up the folders where the LUTs are actually held once you got this open, you're going to go ahead and find DJI and pretty much just drag the uh, LUT you just downloaded straight into the DJI folder. And you can see I've got mine on the top here. I've already done that. And then once you do that, you come back here to our color space tab. That's the only time you'll ever have to do that. You won't have to do that again. Once you got that done, we come back here to our color space tab and we can go back to that third node, the last node that we created. Even though this is the last node in series, this is the first one we're gonna start with the color grading. So we're gonna right click this, we're gonna come down here to LUT, and assuming we did everything right, when we go under the DJI tab, we should see our DJI Osmo Action 4 D-Log M to Rec 709 LUT. Uh, of course, I'm using a Mac, so I'm not sure exactly how to do all this on Windows, but uh, for Mac, this is how it works. So go ahead and click that. All right, now we have got our LUT applied. Uh, every other time you do this, you can just right click go to LUT, go to DJI, and you'll find the LUT there. Uh, dragging it into the folder is just a one-time deal. Um, now we've got that done, uh, we can see the LUT here. All right, now once you've got that LUT on there, our image should look a lot better already. And if you come up here to this waveform, you pretty much wanna see all of the colors not going past the top or the bottom. Going past the top would be clipping the highlights, going past the bottom would be cutting off the shadows. So uh, pretty much we want to make sure that this is a little bit toward the middle and not going off too far in either direction. Now if you notice that it's going off too far in both directions, we can come over here while still in the third node. Click on this where it says key. Go to key output under gain and we can drop that lower if we need to. Now in this case, the uh, full output of the LUT to me looks pretty good and it's not clipping on either side. So we're going to go ahead and leave that as is. Now, once we've done that, we're going to come over here to the first node. I like to turn this off and on to kind of see on the waveform over here, if it's too high or too uh, low, basically. 
if you're seeing that everything on the waveform here all your colors and all that are too low in general or too high um, we could either use the offset to raise it a little bit and the first again in the first node here is where we're doing this we're undo that or we can drag up the gain a little bit if we need to raise it or the lift if we need to bring down the shadows or the gamma would kind of be like the midtones uh, i'm gonna go ahead and set all those back to the way they were but yeah in this case it does look like my waveform is a little bit lower than i would ideally like it so i'm gonna raise up the gain just a little bit here nothing crazy and then turn off and on the LUT, see how it looks there. All right, looking pretty good. And you can turn off and on the nodes, by the way, by clicking the number of the nodes. So I'm clicking number three here. Uh, it's the name of the node. Uh, you could change the names of the nodes if you want to get fancy, but I'm not doing that personally. Um, but anyway, the third node, I always make the LUT. I'm going to use this first node here for both the exposure and the color adjustments. So uh, the exposure, I have adjusted the gain a little bit already. Looking good. I think that's just about right there. Now once we've got that, and in this case I do not need to adjust any temperature or white balance or any colors or anything like that, so I'm going to leave that all as is, just adjust the exposure, leave everything else the way it is. I'm going to come over here to the second node now. I'm going to come down here to this uh, box with a little line through it and click this. This is going to be our uh, curves. I'm going to add a little bit of a contrast curve here raising the highlights a little bit dropping the shadows a little bit there we go nothing too crazy Let's see kind of want to aim for where there are a lot of colors so it really has a little bit more of an impact Let's see you don't want to go too crazy though turn that off and on see how it looks so you can see it just adds a little bit of punch to the image uh, a little bit more contrast really brings out the subject a little bit more and everything else in the image as well so uh, this might be a little bit much, uh, specifically in the shadows, and I'm crunching the shadows a little bit too much. I'm going to bring that up a little bit. But the highlights are looking good, and this waveform is looking pretty good to me, and the image itself looking good to me as well. So uh, that's pretty much it. I really just use those three tabs. The third tab, I apply the LUT first to kind of get the whole idea of how everything's going to look. Um, and then I'll use the first tab to do any adjustments to the exposure that I need. Normally I don't need to adjust the colors at all when it comes to the DJI, but for other cameras I do. Uh, in the DJI's case it does a really good job with the white balance, so I never really have to adjust anything else. Um, I'll leave everything else the way it is. And then like I said, I'll come here to the second tab, come to the curves, do a little curve adjustment, just a little bit of an S-curve there to get a little nice contrast. Now we can see before how the image looked when it was just D-Log 10-bit, and if we turn uh, this load on first we'll see that was kind of what did most of it and then a little exposure to adjust uh, the exposure get that on point and then we're adding that curve now the last thing i want to address is uh, a lot of the times we have more than just one clip that we're color grading and a lot of them might be very similar clips right so you don't want to go through this whole process every time of making three nodes trying to get them all to line up there's two ways to uh, kind of color grade more than one at once uh, I'm going to go over both of those real quick. The first one, really, really simple. Uh, say we've got the one clip already color graded. We've got another clip that we want to color grade just like it. Right? We want it's the same clip or whatever. We want it to be color graded exactly the same way. Um, what we're going to do is click on the clip that you want to color grade first. Have that clip selected. And then we're going to hover over the clip that we want to apply the color grade from. This is the clip that we already have color graded that we want to apply to the clip that we have selected. We're going to come hover over that now and using our scroll bar here, our little scroller, we're actually going to click on that with the scroll wheel to immediately apply that color grade to the clip that we have selected. So nice and simple. That's really the easiest way to do it, but in there's some cases where maybe you want to apply uh, the LUT to all the color grades, but you want to adjust the exposure um, and the S curves a little bit differently across the clips. In that case, what we would do is we would take, um, so we have all these clips here. This is a totally different clip from a different day at a different location, thousand miles away, totally different clip. Um, we're going to take all these, and the only thing that we want to be the same is the color grade, but everything else we're going to want to do differently. So we're going to have them all selected. You could either you could go to one, click shift, go to the other side, select all of those. Once you've got them all selected, we're going to come up here, right click on any of them that you have selected. 
Uh, now you would think that once you have them selected you could just apply a color grade, but what you'll find out is it only applies it to the one that you have outlined in red here. All the other ones are not going to have that color grade applied. So what you need to do is right click on the group that you have selected. Uh, it doesn't have to be the one that's outlined, it could be any of them. Just right click on the selected group, come up here and click add into new group. You're going to name the group whatever you like. Click OK. And what we're going to do now is come up here where it says clip, right up here, right above the nodes, and we're going to click where it says clip, and we're going to go to group post clip. Now you could also do group pre clip, but in this case we're going to be doing group post clip to apply that LUT to all of these clips, but be able to change everything else separately. Then we're going to come here, same thing, right click, come down here to LUT, we're going to go to DJI. Click that DJI Osmo Action 4, D-Log M to Rec 709 LUT, and boom. Now it's applied to all of these clips, and all we have to do is go ahead and uh, come back to where it says clip, and then we could do those two other nodes that we do, and these nodes will go before the post clip ones because it says group post clip, so these nodes will all be applied after the main group clips. We go back to clip. And we could do whatever we need to with the exposure to get the exposure right. And we can come to the second node, boom, do a little uh, contrast curve. There we go. And looking pretty good. Honestly, it doesn't even really need the contrast curve. The LUT pretty much did everything for us in this case. Um, and some of these other clips, maybe we do want to come and adjust the exposure like in this one I think the exposure could be brought up just a little bit and come back oh. accidentally did the wrong note we're gonna add another note and then we go here to the curve probably could have used a little bit of a curve in this one as well so yeah that way I can I can apply these separately to each clip get each clip to how it look how I want but have that LUT only have to go through the process of applying that LUT one time. So that's a really easy way. If you already know these clips are gonna be different slightly, but they're all gonna have the same LUT applied, you can add them to a group, apply the LUT, post clip, and do it that way. If not, like I said, just clicking with the scroll wheel to apply the LUT from another clip to the clip that you have selected, another really easy way to do it. But yeah, those are two ways to do it. If you don't wanna to have to go through and do each node to each clip every time, so that's a much easier way to do it. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Pretty simple, nothing crazy. Uh, just a three node simple process for how I color grade my DJI Osmo Action 4 footage. And everybody watching this video, I uh, really appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you all for watching. Hope you found some value in this video. If you get time, please like, comment, and subscribe. All that nonsense. And uh, until next time, take care everyone.